Hello everyone, welcome back to Banished. Radio here in the town of Folsonville, and Kitty Henry is tearing up the house again, as he's often prone to do. I've noticed that we have a bit of a problem with our blacksmith, only because he's reaching his limit so often. We use these tools, let's up those, uh, get the game running, so it not only gives him something to build, but it gives us something to trade with. We have not a huge excess of iron, but we've got enough iron that we should be building with it, and we certainly have some logs to build with as well, so let's get him set to task. Of course, we finished our town hall last episode, and I'm very excited about that. And our barn is almost done. We're getting very close to being complete on that, and hopefully that will help with all of the things that are going down here. They won't have to go nearly as far to store them or use them. That brings me to my next task, which I think is going to be to actually add a house out here for these people. Now, before I do that, I want to see if I can see what's going on. There's so many trees in here. It's almost difficult to see what's going on. I'm going to add a road, obviously for qu quicker transit. So let's bring this road just straight for now. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a house. Let's see. I guess maybe right next to our Forester's Lodge. Let's go in here, grab a little home, put it right on the road, and we'll go one space off. And hopefully that'll help because people will be living closer to where they work. I might even add an additional house. Let's start with one. Because they still, and even though it'll be, well, it might increase the population ever so slightly. Our food is fluctuating. It's coming back a little bit. If you remember our fishing dock here, it's producing. It's producing much better this year than it did last year. And I'm excited about that. Of course, we have two fishermen living right next door, which is good news. Because that's how it works. What will what'll happen is we'll build a house like this and people will move in and they'll take the jobs that are very close to where they work so we, we want to make sure that we do that. Here's our storage barn, excellent. We've already got leather in there which is clearly coming from our hunting cabin which is producing a decent amount of meat and a decent amount of leather. I'm very happy about that. What we need is a little bit of a population boom but we can't put down too many houses hoping that the ha families will fill them because we'll simply starve them out. Well, if there is some good news, it's that we have seven of eight cows, which means very shortly we're going to be producing leather and beef. So that will help out not only in the food count, but also in making clothes and hopefully as well in trade because we can use some leather for trading as well. How is our blacksmith doing? He's producing away. You know what we can do? We can click on our fancy schmancy town hall and we can look in here and we see that we have 58 iron tools. I really like this thing that you don't have to worry about going from, from barn to barn or to the market. You can just quickly see everything that's going on. Our house is nearing completion here, and I'm wondering how fast people are going to move in and take these two jobs. So we're going to stay here for a second. Let's find out. These sorts of things about the game really interest me because it's just well thought out in this game. Oh, that, you know, at 97%, what happens? They're going to go take lunch. Isn't that always the way? There, they finally come back, and right away, look at that, a builder and a hunter. Wow, that was fast, they moved right in. Oh, we did have a wooden house here already for a forester to gather. That's okay, we should probably put something else out here, uh, maybe in the food gathering profession. Although the problem is, we still don't have enough bodies to fill those jobs. I thought for some reason, I thought this was a production house, not a house, a production building. It wasn't, we just have more people now living down here. That's okay, they can they can walk to other jobs, I suppose, over here, because we don't have any houses here. And holy cow, we did, we have a house, but boy, our hunters, Willop and Rathanen, are getting a little long in the tooth. But they're out there every morning with their bows and arrows, walking around, tracking game, at 72 and 74 years old, freezing their butts off, so the people in the town of Folsomville can eat. Well, our food is bouncing back a little bit. I'm pretty happy about that. Not so much that I want to go crazy with building new things, but it is encouraging that we have some growth in our food department and we're not quite in the dire straits that we were earlier. I think now, unfortunately, it's sort of a waiting game to make sure that we're producing people, getting these people into points where they can be adults, and then from there, assigning them to certain jobs so we can continue to build more people, more food, and more resources. Well, it just makes sense to build a house out here to our northern hunting cabin. It's been here for a while, and I think it's just mean to not have somebody 
being able to live close to their job. So let's go ahead and put down a house real fast. Hopefully that'll be built in a timely fashion. And then we can have our hunters living a little closer to work right next door. And we may even go ahead and build a storage barn kind of out in this vicinity because the closest one is way out here. So maybe if we build a barn midway between here. I don't know if it's a great idea. I'm going to think on that a little bit. But at the very least, it'll help with the hunting production because the people live so close. Because this obviously was just ridiculous and I'm still reeling from that. If it weren't for the fact that we needed food so bad, I would actually shut that down as well. And you're thinking, hey, you know, you could just build another hunting cabin around here someplace and shut that one. I could. I just don't know quite where I want to put it. And that one has been up and running and it's humming right along and it's producing food and leather. So I'm going to leave that for now. Let's check in. It hasn't been a full couple years, I don't believe. But let's see the fishing competition. Last year we produced, down here, 680 fish. What are they doing at the northern dock, by way of comparison? They produced 623. Look at that. They produced about 50 more fish down below than they did up here. And that's good news because I'm telling you, eventually, I'm probably going to add a few more docks around this great big lake. If I can sneak one in, we're going to take a look. I'm not going to put it down, but I wonder if we can get a fishing dock. We sure can. What about out here on this point? Oh, um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, look at that. Half of that radius is in the water. That's going to be awesome. We're not going to do it right now, but we will at some point. We can probably get another one in here, which would be good. So we're definitely going to get some great fishing off of this lake, and that's going to be a mainstay of our diet. We'll look into that, I guess, as we go. Well, it happened. The only sheep left we had is gone, unfortunately. And you know what's sad about it is when they die for some reason, we don't even turn them into mutton. <laughs> we don't even get a chance to eat them, and that's kind of depressing. So if we go into our herdsmen, we have two of two. We don't need to. We can simply just shut this off and not worry about it. I may split the herd. Can I split? Not yet I can't because we still only have seven cows, but I think we may be able to split this herd. So we have, you know, eight cows here and however many will fit in here. So we'll have twice as many, which can do a couple of things. Number one, it can prevent disaster because not just with things like uh, fire and tornadoes, but cattle and sheep and chickens your livestock can catch diseases and they'll die off so if you have them spread out so they're not right next to each other it prevents cross-contamination so to speak so if one pen dies out completely you have a spare and you're not too worried about it and you can rebuild well we have 411 firewood which is pretty good we're building through the summer obviously it doesn't get used a ton until winter hits but i think i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to up our firewood just a little bit in our trading section. We right now have 100. Let's take it to 120. That's not going to ruin us. You know, while I was there, I probably should have looked at other resources like iron, which we have very little of. We have one. One iron, please. Uh, we have a little bit of leather. I think I am going to go ahead and up the leather as well. Plenty of herbs, but of course those really don't trade for many of the resources we need. And that's really about what we can spare. So let's go ahead and we'll go up there and we are going to up our leather. And you know what else we could do if we wanted to? Let's bring our leather to 40. We could, and I don't know the trade ratio on this, I think. Let's up our 150, or do I want 100? Let's start with 150. Let's get, and of course he's out of resources, out of things, or out of resources to make tools. Let's start with 150. Let's get the tailor pumping. And that way we might be able to trade some uh, some coats as well because I believe the coats will trade for a higher value than simply leather, even though we're using just leather to produce it. But because labor is involved and it takes skill to bake the, the coats, they trade for a higher value. So let's get some coats made so we can put some coats in here. But also let's see if we can't find some iron. And I know that there's a bunch up here. We don't have a whole lot going on with our labor force. They're not doing a whole lot. So let's get in here and let's start snagging some of this iron. That's good. And I don't think... Was there any down here? We've collected pretty much iron from the immediate area where we're working so much. There was a little right there. Yeah, we've kind of taken the iron from all of the areas that we've been uh, using around our, around our town central. Well, here's some good news. Our Forester's Lodge has reached a production limit. They're creating so many logs that they've decided to take a break. No thank you. Let's bring this up to 500 
and see how that does for a little while because the more lumber that they're taking in obviously the more firewood that we can make the more firewood we make the more trading we can do and you can see where I'm going with this already we can get the other things that we need like perhaps more cattle how are we doing here we have eight of eight okay now I don't see that we can split this let us try and it may be because there's just not enough this, this is a very small pasture so uh, let's go in here and we're gonna take this we're gonna make it cattle we're going to set it to work we need a worker which we have do we have two herdsmen no so let's bring on a herdsman let's go back over here and we cannot split this that's a drag it really is well okay so we'll go back over here and you know what we'll just shut it off we will remove our herdsmen <laughs> and we'll move on like nothing ever happened nothing to see here except another merchant coming into town Let's see if we have something that we can trade for this time. What do you have for us? Pecans and berries. They have simply food. You know, actually, look at this. I wasn't paying attention. And now it's because of autumn. We just harvested again. But we're coming up in food. And that is good. What kind of orders can I place? It is just food orders with you. I don't really need any of that because I want to produce that ourselves. We should be self-sufficient in food at all times. We've reached our limit again because of our... our uh, was 500, but because our foresters were producing so many logs bless their hearts I think we'll go ahead and up one more time let's make it not this <laughs> with the wrong thing let's make it 600 and let's go and actually let's take a look at our town hall how many firewood do we have in storage right now we have 443 yeah let's go ahead and bring some more firewood in here this is exactly what I was hoping for firewood can be a great trading resource Let's bring this to 160 for now. And that's good. These I want to bring up at some point too. But the firewood being a replenishable resource is really the way to go for this, I think. And it's going to help us in the long run. So I have an idea. Once again, our stockpile is nearing capacity. And even having three vendors isn't quite enough. And we've got a decent supply of food. So I think we're going to build a couple of houses to use some of these resources. It's a tad risky, and I'm also going to start building, actually I'm going to start building down here. So let's get in, and let's build a couple of houses because we really do need to have some people being made. We need babies. So let's go here, and you know, I don't, let's see, we'll go one off. We're going to space that just one off. And I don't like this model, so let's flip that around a little. I'm being picky. But you know what? That's okay. We're allowed to do that. Let's go with that one there. Now, the big question is, do I start to space these one apart, or do I butt them right up to each other? Thusly. I could go one off, or I could have them right together, and I just don't know how I want to do that here. I think in this area, we're going to go block to block. I really think we're going to go tight fit I think this is gonna end up being spaced out so these will be spaced a little bit and in here we're gonna do tight a little bit and we're also gonna play a little bit I think with um, offsetting them a little bit well we've got people dying on us left and right unfortunately I think we'll play with how we have them set so they're not always just in a row or they're not always just in a grid pattern maybe we'll do kind of a house and then a slight off house and a slight off house we're gonna play around with that see if we can't get some more creative element design going on in here because we want this to be obviously both form and function but if you don't have a little fun designing this, what's the point at all, really? Well, we need stone, and there is a, an abundance of it to the north. And I think that we have reached a point that, well, let's start here, but we're going to have to start going north and grabbing more stone and bringing it in before we build that quarry, which I want to get at some point. But for now, we're going to start here. Let's bring this straight across. Yep, we're going to grab all that stone. And once we've done that, we're going to start grabbing some of these stones. There's a juicy bit right there, but let's get some stone into town because hopefully I want to get into building stone roads uh, and stone houses as well. They're more durable and they retain heat better and obviously they're simply better. I will say I very much prefer the look of the wooden houses to the stone houses though. I think it just looks nicer, especially the roofs. If the stone houses were simply gray in body and brown on the roof, I think it would look so much nicer than they do. They just look so gray and drab. But alas, 
in order to be a little more successful in our endeavors, we're going to have to upgrade to stone houses at some time. We just lost a vendor. That's a shame. Oh well. We had somebody replace him, which is good news because we are running again, we're we're so thin on people. Hopefully this will this will give us a little bit of boost. We already have a couple they might be too old to produce children. I hope that they're not. They're bringing down the resources. We need stone. We don't have any laborers. Let's get at least one laborer working over here so we can have somebody grabbing stone from way out here and bringing it way back. But if we can get that one more building built, it's not going to save us. But if we can just get it, hopefully they'll make a kid. And if not, they will make at least a few. And we can get uh, some more stuff. How many children do we have in school? Oh, it tells us right here. We have four students. I don't know. It's a, it's a habit to grab the buildings and look at the buildings. Look at the pile of venison. Man, we are killing some deer in this town that's for sure good eaten sorry I got distracted there I have a tendency to click the building rather than just look at our uh, our cheat sheet up here well peeking through the trees we can see that our construction is underway we've got two people banging away we have Marley who's a 61 year old builder bless her heart and they have finished and we have a slightly younger couple so hopefully they will produce some children soon as well because they haven't at all I don't know what the cutoff is here that will be something interesting I'm going to try to find out. Hmm. What is the cutoff age for people in this game to have and produce children? I'm going to have to look that up or, or see if there's a, a way to find out. We might have to, in our game, just keep track. Now, a kid was just born, and it wasn't there, and it wasn't there. So, we're going to have to see if we can't maybe keep track of some ages of some of our citizens and find out how old is too old. Well, our food is really bouncing back. I know it's early summer, and we're still going to get more from fall uh, into winter. But I think I do want to preempt, and it's not this building, it's this building. I want to preempt hitting the cap. So we're going to take this up to... Actually, you know what? Let's type in here. Let's take this to 7,000 for now. And I think that'll be a good number. That way we don't have to cap out accidentally at 5,000 if I'm not paying attention, as happens sometimes. And that way we don't have to worry about running out of food or being shortchanged because I'm actually thinking with this amount, I want to build more houses. As a matter of fact, not only do I want to, I'm going to because I need to grow this population. We're stalling out something fierce. And if we're not growing, well, uh, what's the point, right? Let's change that model. And that looks like a good one. And we'll go there with it. And do I want to add one more? Oh, you know what? What the heck? Let's add one more house, and we're going to do one more, so we're going to have a row of four houses in a row, all the way down. There we go. Because, boy, we just lost somebody else. Rathan and the vendor has died. Wasn't Rathan a fisherman at one point? I have no idea. I can't keep track anymore. That's okay. We've got a couple more buildings going in. Hopefully they will produce some children, because we are unbelievably low on the child count. And we have some old people, like these people clearly... They're going to be with us for about another 20 to 30 years, but simply not going to produce children, and we need to have children to sustain growth. And that's just the way it is. Now, speaking of children, so to speak, little calves, look at that. We're producing beef, and we're producing leather. 200 a season, and 6 a season. That's pretty good. I think shortly, hopefully before too long, I'm going to have to make some tough decisions about where I want to grow and how I want to expand because we definitely need to make sure that we have an area for farming and for pastures and maybe here, I'm not sure yet, but we're going to expand this so we can make sure that we have a lot more cattle going on because they're very beneficial to us for a lot of different reasons. How are we doing with our trees? We're cutting down all the trees. No, I don't want to do that. These are the th we're, we're harvesting apples. And last year we did 302. That's not bad. The hunting cabin is doing pretty good here. I'm just thinking I might want to move this as well. I don't know if this is a great spot for an orchard. You know what? One thing at a time. What What is the limit we've reached here? Our herbalist has reached yet another limit. Boy, they really are knocking them out up here. Let's go ahead and build another one. Because you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Uh, after these houses are built, next episode, what we are going to build, if we go into town services, we're going to build a hospital. Now, how, builds, how big is the hospital? That's a decent sized building. So yeah, we'll, we'll find a place to put a hospital, so we make sure that we have places to go for our citizens when they get sick, and that way we don't have to worry about them dying off in case we get an influenza. And look, look at that. 
It's a great thing that we've upped our limit because we have beat the cap that we had before. We have successfully overcome the food drought that I put us through. Remember when we were down to 100 food and now we're well over 5,500? We're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to build. Do me a favor. Leave a comment in the section below. Let me know what you're thinking about Folsomville and how we're building and how things are going. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And we're going to see you next time for another episode of Banished.